Everybody is going to want to be in place in Norfolk at their hotels by Tuesday at the latest. So they have time to go in and practice on the floor at their scope and get ready for uh, everything and, and not be traveling at the last minute. Hornets take the opening tip off here as it comes to Savannah Brooks. Brooks goes left side to Jayla Johnson. The other three starters for Delaware State, Alexis Moraney, uh, Jessica Martino, and Ty Tolly. Left side now, it's Moraney for three to start it off. That's a good start for Dell State. Picking up in a full court, 2-2-1 two, two, after the May basket. And a pass by Norfolk State goes out of bounds. Morgan Callahan trying to get to Journey Kayaku. Taylor Williams, Kiara Lowry, and Anaya Finger, the other three starters for North Carolina Central. They're going to say that one was tipped by Delaware State before it went out of bounds. It will be North Carolina Central ball. It's Kiaku, right side, cross-court pass over to Kiara Lowry. Lowry goes down on the baseline, and the shot is blocked and goes out of bounds. Anaya Finger tried to get a layup underneath along the baseline. Her shot blocked and touched by Delaware State. So it will be central ball with eight seconds now on the shot clock. Here's Lowry, right side, passes it over to Callahan. Two seconds, shot goes up by Lowry and she hits it for the three, we're tied. That's a big shot right there at the end of the shot clock. Just beat the buzzer by a second. Brooks takes it down the right side, passes it over to Tolly. Ty Tolly gets it back out now to Moraney. Moraney out near the logo, makes a move up just a bit. Here's Brooks on the right side now, getting it back over toward the middle to Tolly. They go to Johnson in the foul circle. Now Moraney on the left side brings it back over to Johnson. Brooks by herself, right side for three, off the back of the rim. It comes out and it's grabbed by Ty Tolly. Hornets get another opportunity here. Moraney now left side, gets it to Brooks in the middle. They go right side to Johnson. Johnson drives in. Baseline jumper, good. Great start here for the Lady Hornets, coming out aggressive. North Carolina Central brings it down quickly. Kiaku stops. The ball slapped away by Savannah Brooks. Out of bounds. Eagles keep it. 25 seconds left on the shot clock for them. Hornets up 5-3. Savannah Brooks is playing well. She got rookie of the week this week. Third time this season, right? Yeah. Cross-court pass now to Kiaku. She comes in on the baseline. That one slapped away by Martino out of bounds. Stops the clock now with 21 seconds on the shot clock for the Eagles. Official, nobody was out there to take the inbound pass. He was ready to just put it on the floor and let it happen. Lowry now, top of the key, right side into Taylor Williams. Now they go inside to Callahan, back out. From inside the foul circle, shot by Lowry, misses, and it just bounces to the right side and out of bounds. Hornets ball. See if they can pick up this lead a little bit here as Moraney works with Johnson in the backcourt, back over to Moraney. They kick it ahead now on the right side to Brooks. Brooks goes down to the baseline, stops, pulls up there, steps outside the arc, passes it out to Tyshawn Tolley. Knocked out of bounds by North, North Carolina Central. Hornets keep it, 17 seconds on the shot clock for them. They have 7.47 left in the first quarter. Brooks sends it in to Moraney. Moraney comes over to the left side, top of the key, inside to Martino. Pass, tried to get it down to Tolly on the baseline, and it was a bad pass taken away by Norfolk State's Taylor Williams. It's North Carolina Central. And now a shot from just inside the arc for two. Morgan Callahan ties us up at five with 7.20 left in the first quarter. They're going to leave her open, it looks like, for that shot, but they may have to close a little bit harder. Now as Savannah Brooks comes across the center court, ball came loose, and the officials are going to get together and talk about this. The one on the far side of the court from us saw one thing as Savannah Brooks was coming across. The official on the near side close to us saw something different, and they are going to inadvertent whistle is what they're going to say, Yeah. and it will be Hornets' ball. Yeah, Savannah Brooks was over at 21, then the ball got deflected, and the ref didn't see it. That's all right. That's good officiating. They come together and get the right call. And, it, State's ball. and it only took two of them. They didn't have to go and spend 15 minutes at the replay. 
But North Carolina Central comes up with a steal. It's Kiaku coming up to the baseline and puts the Eagles ahead for the first time, 7-5. to five. We have our first lead change of the game now with North Carolina Central slipping ahead. 6.45 left in the period. They try to take it inside. Moraney bounce passing it to Martino. And a couple of players coming in from behind. Anaya Finger making contact from behind, knocking Martino just about on her nose. Yeah. And Hornets will keep the ball here. They'll put 20 seconds on the shot clock. And that is the first foul called in the game on North Carolina Central. It's Moraney going left side to Brooks. Brooks sends it back out top of the key. Johnson right side. Moraney takes it inside. Martino with a jumper from the right side of the foul circle. And she's good. Tied at seven. Kiaku coming up. Hornets trying to come over and take the ball away. The difference is Dale State is picking up full court in a 2 2 1, and so is uh, Central. But the difference is Dell State is trying to trap out, and Central is just trying to make Dell State make unforced errors. They're dropping back into a 2 3, and they're not trapping or being aggressive at all. If Dell State shows patience, they can pick that zone apart. Jessica Martino was called for the foul. They're even on fouls at one each. North Carolina Central, that's going to be a charge. And they're going to put the one on Morgan Callahan as Savannah Brooks stood there and took it. Tough young lady. She has taken a number of charges this season. And again, that's the difference from the, that play to the last play. They closed out hard on her. And then that way, when she went to drive, there was Brooks right there for the charge. Down to six minutes now left in the first quarter. Brooks right side. Bounce pass down along the baseline. Martino jumper. She got another. Martino with two point, uh, four points in the game. And the lead changes back to Delaware State, 9-7. Again, there's that aggressive D by Dell State. Lowry, top of the key, over to the left side to Kiaku. Kiaku comes back toward the middle, now pulls up, steps back outside, goes right side to Williams. Williams trying to get around Brooks, nothing happening there. Brooks with a tight defense. They send it out top of the key. Callahan comes into the paint, puts up a wild shot, touch nothing until it hit the floor out of bounds. Turnover to Delaware State. Good possession there, or good defense on that position by the Hornets. Moraney and Brooks play catch in the backcourt, get it across. Tyshawn Tolly, Tolly with the ball, out to Moraney, she'll move to the middle. Again, Dale State showing patience. Jayla Johnson right side, they'll take it all the way around left side to Moraney, Alexis Moraney. Makes it an 11-7 game with 4.55 left in the quarter. Great ball movement, great patience, moving that ball around and get the open shot. Lowry comes down, takes it left corner, shot for three, missing for North Carolina Central as they get the rebound off the Taylor Williams shot. Now it's Kiaku who brings it around top of the key, goes left side to Williams. Williams being badgered by Brooks. It's Callahan working along the baseline. Losing the ball, out of bounds, Hornets ball, and another forced turnover. Brings us to our first time out of the first period. 4.29 left in the first quarter. Delaware State up by five, 12 to seven over North Carolina Central. Putting the U in HBCU, we are HSRN. Why choose Del One? Del One is rooted in Delaware and here to cover you through your financial journey. From your first account, auto loan, or rewards credit card, buying a home or starting a business, investing, planning for retirement, and then enjoying it. Get what you need when you need it. Del One has you covered. Choose Del One and let's grow together. Calling all Hornets fans. Be sure to follow Bay Health on social media. Find us on Facebook at Bay Health, on Twitter at Bay Health DE, on Instagram at Bay Health. You can find us on TikTok and on LinkedIn. Bay Health, we're here for our Hornets. 
Taste the uniqueness of our first-generation German bakery in Delhi. The new Bavarian bakery in Delhi in Dover. Authentic, original creations are made fresh from scratch every day. Enjoy one of our great pastries and signature cakes. Don't forget to bring home our house-made breads. The official sponsors of HSRN, Symphony Potato Chips, Fred Drake Automotive, B2 L29 Premium Alkaline Water, America's Mortgage Coach John Millette, the Little Creek Fire Company, and Cush College. Hornets with the ball here as we come back to action. It's Moraney along the baseline. She blocked out, and her shot came up well short. Kiaku gets the loose ball, brings it down the left side, trying to get inside, steps up, takes a jumper, misses, and it's Martino going for the rebound. And they're going to call an offensive foul. She was pushed. Eagles foul. Anaya Finger with her second personal foul now. That's the third on the team for North Carolina Central. Delaware State gets the ball. Martino gives it off to Jayla Johnson. She works at the top of the key. Goes right side to Brooks. Nice bounce pass. Baseline. Martino shot. Missed. Comes out to North Carolina Central. It's Lowry going inside, and as she goes for the shot, she's fouled by Savannah Brooks. Second team foul on Delaware State, the first for Brooks. Pass along information, Jasmine Turner, an assistant coach, is coaching for the Hornets today. Coach E.C. Hill, according to the website, is on a leave. And we know nothing more than what you could find out by looking at the Dell State website. That's all the information we have on it. It's Kira Lowry at the line who hits the first foul shot. And she'll, on the one and one, get another opportunity here to bring her team within three if she's able to hit this one. And it bounces around, comes out to Delaware State. Tolly's there for the loose ball. It's a 12-8 lead for Delaware State. Rainey now goes right side to Brooks. Brooks. Trying to go around the defender. Nice move, pulls up. The defender kept going. Brooks shot just a hair short as it hit off the rim and came down to North Carolina Central. Eagles Lowry with a shot. Good for two more. Lowry is the one that goes for that team. As she goes, they go. Both teams in double figures now. It's 12-10. Hornets up by two. Johnson tries to drive down to the baseline. Blocked out there. Now Marini goes back to Johnson on the left. Bounce pass inside, Tolly works into the paint, off her foot, and through Martino's legs and out of bounds. Tolly has a decent size advantage against number five from Central, but they have to start working the ball inside to her. Kamira Burks comes in for North Carolina Central as Kiaku goes to the bench. It's Lowry right now, working across the foul circle. And a travel called on Kamara Brooks, who just came into the game, took the pass and started to move, but got the feet moving before the dribble. And the official right there on top of it. Again, uh, Morgan, I mean, Morgan. Yeah. North Carolina Central has multiple subs, and as Dell State is still with their same five. Referee for this game, Wesley Carter. The umpires are Chalisa Painter and Darwin Thompson. Johnson driving left side of the lane. She goes up and gets fouled pretty hard, too. Went down on the foul by Blessing Oko. Two and a half minutes left in the first period. Jayla Johnson to go to the line and on the season, 64 and a half percent. Johnson's first shot, good. Got to make him from the line to help the team. 13-10 lead now. Johnson to shoot the second and makes it as good as the first. So the Hornets up now again by four, 14 to 10. Burks brings it down the right side for North Carolina Central, sends it back out to Lowry, back out at the logo at center court. Now she steps up about six feet, works to the right side. Goes left side to Burks. Burks bounce pass inside, left side of the paint. Put up by Cindy Avaletta. Her shot misses, and Martino's there for the rebound. Hornets in the white uniforms today with red numerals. 
Central in that burgundy with gray color numerals. It's okay here, but boy, I don't like that on a football field. <laughs> I'm a couple hundred feet further away. Hard to see that. Brooks now works to the top of the key. She'll drive into the paint. Goes underneath the tie tolly off the oh, glass. That's me. And yes. she got the feet moving. Got her for traveling. <laughs> Jessica Martino gets a break here. Brianna Dodson will come into the game for the Hornets. It was a good opportunity there, though. Good pass. Just Go. shuffled her feet a little bit. Lowry through the defense, sends it right side down in the corner to Nia Ford. Nia Ford, and she hits a three to make it a one-point game now. 14-13, a minute and a half to go in the quarter. Martino, or check that, Marini. Over to Brooks. Brooks goes inside then to Dodson. Dodson in the foul circle, back out to Marini. Marini goes inside the arc, takes a jumper, hits off the back of the rim for her, and it comes down to Ford for the Eagles. Eagles have a chance here to get the lead back as Lowry will take it down the left side. Hits off the rim, loose ball grabbed by Delaware State. It's Dodson, they got her in there for defense to use that good size. Excellent job boxing out that time to get that defensive rebound. Rainey to the right side to Brooks. Brooks goes inside, trying to get it to Dodson. The ball tipped away. Dodson saved it from going out of bounds. Now she'll work to the right side of the lane out to Moraney. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Moraney works to the right side. Through traffic, off the glass, comes down, and it's taken by Lowry for North Carolina Central. Down to 25 seconds left in the quarter as Lowry bounces the ball, dribbles to the right side. Now bounce pass over to Oka, top of the key, goes over to the left side, driving along the baseline and a shot that goes over everything for Nia Ford. Gotta Brooks will to hold for one shot right here, Gary. Brooks brings it down, sets it up, trying to get it done quickly though. Five seconds, four seconds, she goes through and the ball, as she puts it up for an underhanded layup, slapped away and time will run out. No, it won't. Six tenths of a second do we have in the quarter? The clock had stopped and the ref was saying that it should have expired. We'll just hold on here a moment until we know exactly what the situation is. The Little Creek Fire Company is looking for a few good people ready to make a difference in their community. Give a call to the Little Creek Fire Company to find out how you can help. Give a call to Scott Bundick at 302. 362-5455. And they're still showing six tenths of a second in the quarter on the clock. They're going to bring the teams back out here, but should be enough time for somebody to bounce the ball to somebody, and then they can declare the quarter over. At least it would appear that way. No, I think they're going to reset it. All right, give you some quick uh, I think, I think the quarter's over. Yeah, they just reset yeah. the clock, so we're going to take the break. It's Delaware State 14, North Carolina Central 12. Putting the U in HBCU, we are HSRN. Taste the uniqueness of our first-generation German bakery in Delhi. The new Bavarian bakery in Delhi in Dover. Authentic, original creations are made fresh from scratch every day. Enjoy one of our great pastries and signature cakes. Don't forget to bring home our house-made breads, Bavarian rye, sourdough, and fresh sandwich rolls. At our deli, choose from 14 different breads. You deserve only the best. The new Bavarian bakery in Delhi in Dover. back in as quickly as it can. They, they restarted the game and then they blew the whistle and stopped everything. They're going to reset and start yeah. again. All right, here we go.
Hornets leading 14 to 12 as we begin the second period here in Memorial Hall. Gary Lang along with Charles Robinson updates you on MEAC action. The women, Morgan State trails North, uh, Norfolk State 14 to 8 right at the moment. Coppin State and Howard tied at 11 to each. And UMES leading South Carolina State 11 to 5. Alkaline Water at its best, B2 L29 Premium Alkaline Water. Visit them on the web at B2L29PW.com. I now, believe what happened there, Gary, was that the band is not supposed to be playing when the game is in session. Yeah. And what happened was they started the game while the band was still finishing up playing, so they restarted. A little bit of confusion, too, that threw everybody off on their timing because yeah. of the clock problem right at the end of the first quarter. Jayla Johnson drives in along the baseline. Gets a layup, but it misses. Rebecca Ford grabbed the loose ball inside for Delaware State. And now Johnson takes a pass, but as it comes to her, she gets fouled Foul by up. Kamira Burtz. That's her first personal. And uh, 35 seconds into the second quarter, the first for the team in this quarter. Inbounded to Martina, uh, uh, Moraney. Moraney. Goes to Ford at the top of the key. She dribbles to the left side. Now back over to the right to Johnson. Johnson looking inside. Gives to Martino. She goes into the paint. Puts up a shot just off the mark a little bit. And it comes down to Norfolk State. Got a Norfolk State player down on the court. Central. Grabbing at her right ankle. Yeah, North Carolina Central. I don't know why I keep saying it. Journey Kiyaku down. And she grabbing at her right ankle here. And I think that, uh, that we mentioned Jasmine Turner, the assistant coach, is coaching the team here today. Mm. And as I look at the bench, I think she has a short squad this afternoon. Yeah. Um, some of the players who might be along the way, not dressed for the game. So we're seeing some players who might not have gotten into the game this early, early in this contest. Yeah. And again, it's tough during the month of February. You, you, you got to try to stay as healthy as possible kids are going to classes you got practices you have games so it gets a little tough on the body mentally as well as physically but Kiyaku, here yeah. you got central looking like they're going with a lot of size they're going with a three two lineup here with two guards up top and three bigs down low for central kiaku just limped to a chair at the bench she's seventh in the miak in scoring averaging 12.1 per game see how that affects the eagles here this afternoon shot by avaletta missing delaware state gets the loose ball and again there was that high low trying to use their size against dell state johnson works around to the right side bounces it inside to dodson now back out to ford ford top of the key about six feet back from the circle, Jayla Johnson goes inside. Nice move around the defender. Great step by Jayla Johnson. And it's 16 to 12. Delaware State in front with 8-18 left in the second period. Pass down on the right side. Gets to Callahan. Callahan takes it inside. Avaletta fadeaway jumper in the paint. And it sure faded away. It faded away from the rim. Yeah. And again, they're trying to go inside a lot more now. Uh, Central has their three bigs in at the same time. So they're trying to get Dell State from the inside out. And Dell State's doing a great job of getting the ball. Rebecca Ford gets the break. And Brooks comes back into the game for the Hornets. Dodson goes left side. Brooks for three. Too strong. Air ball that the Eagles will let go out of bounds. Hornets up by four. Avaletta now goes out. Anaya Finger back in for North Carolina Central. Hornets fighting for position in the MEAC standings so that they can get a good start and not have to play on that Wednesday that starts the tournament. They'd rather have that extra day. Everybody does. Yeah. Burks goes left side now. In on the baseline. And they're going to call traveling on Lowry as she stopped to take a shot and then moved a foot again. Again, they're shutting down that inside presence for uh, North Carolina Central, and it's causing the guards to do a little bit more than they want to. And defensively rebounding well, not giving Central too many second chances. Johnson, right side, gets it down to Martino near the baseline. She'll bring it into the lane, what pass it off. Look. 
And Brianna Dodson ready for it, waiting for it right there on the left side and put it up and in to make it 18 to 12. A great look. And now we have a jump ball created by Jayla Johnson who came down and she was just chest to chest with the North Carolina Central player. Now Taylor Williams back into the game for the Eagles. Blessing Oka went out for North Carolina Central. Lowry now goes left side. Burks sends it back over to the right side. Taylor Williams, they go underneath. It's up wow. off the glass and in. That was a great look by Taylor Williams. Morgan Callahan with the basket, 18-14, 6-45 left in this first half of play here. They go to the left side to Johnson. Mal now back to Moraney. She'll take it to Martino. Johnson into the paint, left side off the glass, hit off the rim, went back off the glass and came down to North Carolina Central. Wow, unfortunate that time. Great move by Johnson. Looked like it was gonna go too. Lowry goes to the right side of the lane, kicks it back to the right corner into Taylor Williams. I thought when I heard that whistle, I might hear traveling, but no, it's going to be Martino called for her second personal foul. Yeah. First team foul here in this quarter. Ty Tali comes back in, Martino gets a breather, and I think that uh, Desmond Turner will be substituting frequently here, going to that bench. Yeah because it looked like the reason why they're in the zone. Again, fatigue can be a factor. And with Martino playing as well as she has these first two quarters, she needs a breather right now. They're a little gassed. And the Hornets, looks like only seven players dressed for this game. At the line, it's Taylor Williams hitting both shots to make it 18 to 16. And so Delaware State will go on the attack again. They try to Caused problems in the backcourt, tied up Ty Tolly, and she got it off to Marini. Marini brought it down without any difficulty whatsoever. Savannah Brooks lets, gets the ball on the left side. Gets it to Johnson, they'll work inside to Dodson. Dodson gives it back off to Jayla Johnson. Nice move by Johnson to lose the defender, then sent it down to Tolly on the left side. She went in for a layup, she's having a tough time. Some good shots that just won't fall. It's Lowry from the paint. Jumper misses. Hornets block out. Wow, great and box gets, out by that, Johnson. That was beautiful. As Johnson then came away with the ball in the lane and brought it down for Delaware State. Right side to Moraney. Back out. Brooks goes inside to Dodson. Dodson, nice pass over top to Tolly. Her shot off the glass, too strong, came down to North, uh, North Carolina Central. Finger got the rebound and gave it off to Lowry. Lowry gives it way back outside to Burks, who shoots for three, missing. I don't know if that was supposed to happen. She just fired that up like it was the end of the shot clock. <laughs> Tolly got that ball for Delaware State. She has it right now and gives it to Johnson. Johnson oh. lost the handle on it, and it will be North Carolina Central ball, a chance for the Eagles to tie it up when we come back. 4.52 left in the first half here in Dover. Delaware State 18, North Carolina Central 16, putting the U in HBCU. We're HSRN. I'm Dr. Candace Samuels, a family medicine doctor at Bay Health Family Medicine Dover and a proud Delaware State alum. As a family medicine doctor, I provide primary care for the entire family, from the newest addition to grandma and grandpa and everyone in between. I also offer OB care, including prenatal care and low-risk deliveries for moms-to-be. I'm proud to be caring for the community that raised me, and I'm especially honored to give back to my DSU family. I'm Dr. Candace Samuels, and I'm here for our Hornets.
All of your automotive needs, trust the duck. That's Fred Drake Automotive, 302-378-4877. North Carolina Central trying to tie the game here down by two with the possession. And we have a whistle traveling called on the Eagles. And so the Hornets will get it back and a chance to increase their lead. Update you on what's happening in the MEAC women's action today. Norfolk State leading Morgan State 25-16. Howard trailing Coppin State 17-13. South Carolina State way behind UMES now 28-10. There's a shot from the right side by Brooks. Didn't make it. Loose ball. Eagles ball as the ball rolled out of bounds on Delaware State. We'll correct that. Norfolk State leading 25-10 over Morgan State. Can't read my own writing sometimes. Taylor Williams, left side, pulls up, looks to pass it, does so right in front of the Hornets bench. Yes. And then Kiaku, who had gone out uh, limping earlier with the right ankle back into the game, she took a pass, tried to come in along the baseline and got called for traveling. Hornets substituting here as Dodson comes back in for Delaware State. Coach now has used everybody available to her. Multiple times. <laughs> now Brooks takes it to Dodson. Dodson along the baseline, up off the glass, just a little bit too light and didn't make it all the way up. Lowry. Takes it down, goes left side to Tippy Robertson. Now back to Lowry, top of the key. She'll drive right side of the lane and faded away. Kind of took a step backward that they could have called. At any rate, it was well short of the basket, and Delaware State grabbed the ball. Now Brooks thought about going for three. Instead, passed it inside, and it looks like Dodson wasn't ready for that pass, and it went off her hands out of bounds. Good idea, good look. Again, tough pass that time, out of control a little bit by Savannah Brooks. Yeah, but when you're inside like that, don't you have your half of your hands up in position and ready? Well, and her hands were up, but the ball was down. Yeah, okay. It <laughs> was, yeah. You're right. Kiaka with a jumper. Misses. Comes off the glass. The Delaware State lead pass to Johnson. And we'll have a blocking foul called on North Carolina Central. As the defender was traveling with Jayla Johnson, and Johnson realized it and went ahead and forced the foul. Good aggressive move that time by Johnson. Jayla Johnson to the line to shoot. Hit mm -hmm. off the back of the rim and dropped in. Johnson getting the second one to go. Eight points for Jayla Johnson in this game today. She averages five per game, so she is well above her average. Yeah, taking a little breather here again. Coaches rotating these young ladies. Excellent. Delaware State now leads by four, 20 to 16 over North Carolina Central. There's a move in the lane. Little and touch a, foul. A that whistle time. and a foul, yes. By Dotson. Here's a uh, foul on Delaware State. It's on Bree Dodson. Morgan Callahan at the line for the Eagles. Callahan hitting the first shot. And she gets both. About to say, a player you wouldn't mind putting at the line because she's only shooting 58% from there on the season. But her average just went up slightly. Now the Hornets, with three minutes left in the half, go inside to Dodson. Dodson goes left side. Moraney by herself down there, but she'll bring it back out, using up some of that clock. Now dribbles around to Brooks on the right side. Her shot deflected, grabbed in the air by Tolly. Tolly has it taken away, though, as she tried to get position to make a shot underneath. Lowry will bring it down. And loses the ball, turns it over to Savannah Brooks. Brooks, lead pass to Tolly. And Tolly going to be car charged for the foul. The defender looked like she was moving, but Tolly got called on it. Yeah, it looks like a little bit of displacement. They both were in the same position at the same time. 
Vitali made the right move, going hard to the basket, let the ref make the call. 13 foul now on Delaware State with 228 left in the period. Tolly with her first foul of the game. Tippy Robertson will bring it down for North Carolina Central. Give it off to Kiaku. She goes left side of the lane, rolls around the rim, comes down, and it is Dodson on the strong rebound. Dodson giving it to Sydney Curtis. She's getting her first action today. Curtis over to Savannah Brooks. Brooks wants three. Off the back of the rim, goes up high and comes down to Taylor Williams. Each time Brooks let that ball go, it looks like it's going in. It did. And a shot missed by Kiaku, but the follow-up by Callahan for North Carolina Central makes it 20 to, 20 to 20. 143 left. Oh. Good big look. Nice pass inside underneath Ty Tolly for her first basket of the game. Puts the Hornets back in front by two, 22 to 20. Less than a minute and a half left in this second quarter. Lowry, pass shot missed by North Carolina Central. But right there to grab the loose ball, Kiaku. So they get another opportunity. That shot a line drive by Tippy Robertson. Hits off the rim, loose ball then goes to Moraney for Delaware State. Brooks now on the right side will go inside to Tolly. Almost lost it, got it back. Moraney gets it now out the top of the key. One minute left in the half. Sydney Curtis left side goes back outside to Moraney. Now to Curtis on the left. Giving it inside. Dodson left handed to the lane and good for a basket to make it 24 20. That's two good looks by Curtis running through the offense, going inside out, looking for her post players. Sydney Curtis in just her third game where she's gotten action this season. Looking like she's been out there most of the year. Now it's Nia Ford on the right side. Lost the dribble, had to get it out to Tippy Robinson. Take it inside Callahan underneath for the layup to make it 24-22. 15 seconds left in the quarter for Delaware State to try to increase the lead up by two right now. They finish the first quarter up by two. Now Tolly backs in, loses the ball. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. Shot goes off, it misses, and the buzzer goes off, ending the first half. They'll go to the locker room just with the way they finished the first quarter with Delaware State up by two. This time it's 24 to 22 over North Carolina Central. Well, if you think you can't qualify for a mortgage, give it another thought. America's Mortgage Coach John Millette, ready to help you, has answers and can get help get you through the process. Call him at 1-866-409-9000, 866-409-9000. Cush College is a proud supporter of HBCU Sports. Find them on the web at cushcollege.com. They'll go to the locker room. Hornets up by two on this Saturday afternoon, 24-22. Putting the U in HBCU. We are HSRN. Hey Hornets, I'm Dr. Candace Samuels, a family medicine doctor at Bay Health Family Medicine Dover and a proud Delaware State alum. As a family medicine doctor, I provide primary care for the entire family, from the newest addition to grandma and grandpa and everyone in between. I also offer OB care, including prenatal care and low risk deliveries for moms to be. I'm proud to be caring for the community that raised me and I'm especially honored to give back to my DSU family. I'm Dr. Candace Samuels, and I'm here for our Hornets. What is going on, you guys? I'm your host, Stefan, and welcome to Halftime, the best show in between the show. Now, many of you may not know this, but I'm a senior here at the great Delaware State University. I've been here all four years, and let me tell you, it has been a whirlwind. DSU is full of opportunities, family, and most importantly, fun. But honestly, my favorite thing about DSU is the students. We're such a diverse group, and there is so much talent to be found just by walking through the halls. So who better to talk to about DSU than two of our very best student leaders? 
Now today, I'm sitting next to Dave Hawkins and Rashad Lathern, two very impressive individuals. Serving as the president and the recording secretary, respectively, they make up one half of the Resurrection Administration. How are you both doing today? I'm doing Feeling pretty good. Thank you for having me. Man. Thank you for having me. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, right off the bat, beyond being amazing student leaders, can you tell the audience a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, so uh, general information, David Hawkins. I'm a financial economics major. As you all know, I am also the president. Um, some of the things I like to do offline, like not a lot of people really know about, I like to read. I really like to podcast. I really like to be to myself and uh, really just sit alone in my thoughts and really get my things together. Just when, when you're working in a position such as president, it comes with a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. um, good weight, because I'm, I'm healthy about what I'm doing. But um, I definitely like to really spend time to myself and really just be on my show. Right, definitely. And just some general facts, my name is Rashad Lathan, as you all know. I'm currently a senior major in mass communications with concentration in digital media, mm -hmm. with main concentration in sports broadcasting. And some little general facts about myself, actually I'm on my own clothing business called mm -hmm. Fade Clothing. Mm -hmm. And I also have my own sports podcast in the ETV, Buzz Sports Talk. And some general facts of people that know about me is like I like to listen to music. It really like brings me peace in life. Um, it's really just words of affirmation words like motivation to help me live my everyday life and like every single day I wake up with a mindset I have to be one percent better every single day because of course you could think about the far goal but you always got to look at the small goals first to get to that big goal so that's the biggest thing that's also I, I pile into my position as recording secretary for this year it's not about how you start it's always about how, how you, you finish, finish. Right. now we are just getting into this so don't go anywhere we'll be right back with more halftime why choose Dell one Dell One is rooted in Delaware and here to cover you through your financial journey. From your first account, auto loan, or rewards credit card, buying a home or starting a business, investing, planning for retirement, and then enjoying it. Get what you need when you need it. Dell One has you covered. Choose Dell One and let's grow together. All right, y'all, we are back with more halftime. Let's get back into it. One place I feel like I'm always sure to see you guys is a sports game. Now, I'm about to ask you a tough question, so don't hate me, but <laughs> do you prefer football season or basketball season and why? I'm going to have to go with basketball season, just off the energy that's in the stadium. Mm -hmm. um, be, be, let's talk about the, really the previous game against Howard. Um, it's like the energy, the crowd, like when we it's like, different. it's a closed game. It's just mm -hmm. the energy, the HBCU feeling, the chilies involved. Um, even it's like it's literally a different atmosphere you want to be in other than football. Football games do be um, heavy, but basketball is a different atmosphere. Um, of course, in Memorial Hall, clutch games, game winners, mm -hmm. and it's like it's really like a biggest atmosphere than football. So I prefer basketball, but it's much love the football team though for sure. <laughs> Shy hit it pretty much on the nail for me. Like the football seems like it'd be lit. But it's not as personal as it yeah, is in like, Memorial yeah. Hall. Like, I ain't gonna lie, cause me and SGA, we be looking up the ro the enemy roster's <laughs> team and we be talking crazy. crazy like, man. like, yo, you gonna miss? Like, you, you suck. Like, what? Yeah, like, they are gonna miss. Definitely the basketball <laughs> games, man. Easy. So, what made you guys wanna run for SGA in the first place? Um, what really made me want to run for the Student Government Association was through my leadership in the Men of Color Alliance. Um, when I joined my sophomore year, um, I wouldn't say that it necessarily fell into my lap because I worked for the position. Um, but when I just saw the impact I was having over the brothers' lives on campus, um, really just highlighting their potential. Like, there's, there's so many people on this campus of different majors, like future mm -hmm. billionaires, future uh, TV hosts, future uh, everything, you know? Like, everything that we could do at Delaware State University is in-house. And I just feel as though it's my goal and my duty as a leader to help you grow your wings and fly and give you that platform that you need and then move on with the next chapter <laughs> in your life, you know? So um, when I'm transitioned over to SGA, I already knew what needed to be done. Mm -hmm. um, just carrying with that same, that same energy, like, yeah, at the end of the day, everybody on this campus got potential. Really just flexing as much of your resources as possible because at the end of the day, we all go to a historically black mm -hmm. college and university. Like, mm -hmm. I, I really want to hit that on the nail because students need to understand every day that they wake up on this campus, you are walking in and creating rich black history mm. every day. Mm -hmm. So really when you're coming in here, you come in here with, on, top of your on top of your stuff, and then you're pursuing your degree. Yeah, the fun and all that stuff, that comes and goes. That's part of the college experience. It's the best four years of your life, but it's all about what you make of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. And um, this is about what Dave said. The main reason why I wanted to join SGA, Student Government Association, it really comes down to when I was growing up, 
um, basically want to be a leader and want to leave my impact on the people, not only myself, but somebody else around me, like around my circle. Um, and also, it was a problem then by being a junior college court secretary my junior year. And I really fell in love with the position by leaving my mark. And like I said in the beginning mm-hmm. of the interview, um, the biggest thing I learned at the freshman year induction ceremony was leave your mark. How you want to leave your mark on this campus? How you want to leave your your mark and your history here at DSU? Because everybody had the same four years. It's really about right. how you utilize it. Because DSU, right. they had the best resource that really to be successful. It's really about how you utilize it. And um, by being that, um, that really powers in my leadership skills as far as being a leader and making an impact. So that's really like my main thing and really move all genuine intentions. Because of course, um, you can have a position, you can have a title, but if you don't put the work in, people are going to see through you and they're going to be like, mm-hmm. oh, you know what I'm saying? Oh, he's just doing it just for the image. He's just doing it for the extra stuff. No. Really, the really true leaders are really going to put the groundwork and really see, you're going to see it. And that's the really thing. It's all about moving with action, not words. And to build on that, like, really quickly as well, like, that's going to reflect in, like, how you carry yourself as far as your campaign goes. Because campaign season mm-hmm. right around the corner, so, right? Yes. <laughs> um, but it's very important that when you're going and you're campaigning, like, you're true to you. Mm-hmm. You're, mm-hmm. you're 100% your authentic self because... If you walk around with a mask on, people are quick to call you yeah. out on that, you know? Yeah. So, very important by what you said, for sure. Right. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> now, as students who have been here for a while, I'm sure you've seen so much change about the school. You know, from events to the students, like, even the food in the cafe is different. What are some notable things that you think have changed from your freshman year to now? Um, if I'm being quite honest, I feel as though, like, now people are a lot more connected than ever, right? Due to, like, social media and stuff like that, like, when... I came here in 2019, social media was always present, right. but a lot of people were a lot more outgoing, I guess you could say. Right, okay. And I, and I don't want to make it seem like I'm blaming this on the newer generation of classes that come through because, you know, we experienced two years of COVID and things of that nature, and I just feel as though people are slowly starting to warm back up. But I just feel as though my freshman year, it was a lot more love felt, you know? Like, yeah. every day I was meeting, like, 10 new people <laughs> across a whole bunch of different classes versus now. You could probably, like, go outside and probably see a couple people out there now. Mm-hmm. I just want to thank you guys so, so much for coming out to sit with me. Always. It was thank great talking to you guys. Thank you. Thank and I'm really happy my audience got to meet you guys because y'all are some people people need to know about. Let me tell you. Yes, thank sir. you. Yes, sir. Thank you. And I just want to thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, I'm your host, Stefan, and this has been Halftime. Yes, sir. Taste the uniqueness of our first-generation German bakery in Delhi, the new Bavarian bakery in Delhi in Dover. Authentic, original creations are made fresh from scratch every day. Enjoy one of our great pastries and signature cakes. Don't forget to bring home our house-made breads, Bavarian rye, sourdough, and fresh sandwich rolls. At our deli, choose from 14 different breads. You deserve only the best. The new Bavarian bakery in Delhi in Dover. I'm Dr. Candace Samuels, a family medicine doctor at Bay Health Family Medicine Dover and a proud Delaware State alum. As a family medicine doctor, I provide primary care for the entire family, from the newest addition to grandma and grandpa and everyone in between. I also offer OB care, including prenatal care and low risk deliveries for moms to be. I'm proud to be caring for the community that raised me and I'm especially honored to give back to my DSU family. I'm Dr. Candace Samuels, and I'm here for our Hornets.
I'm Kimberly Holmes, Stroke Clinical Nurse Specialist at Bay Health, Chair of the Delaware Stroke System of Care Committee, and Board President of the Delaware American Heart and Stroke Association. I am also a proud DSU alumna. Stroke disproportionately affects African Americans. I am driven to educate my community regarding the prevention and or control of risk factors such as high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and obesity. I'm Kimberly Holmes and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Lytle Letsom. I'm a general surgeon. I am the director of wound care for Bay Health for both its Kent and Sussex campuses. I think that the thing to rising up above is one, changing the stigma of being scientifically and mathematically proficient as a person of color. That is both within our community and external to our community. I am currently 52 years old. I have faced that stigma every face, every step of my career, no matter where I went. The notion that me being an African American that I was proficient, forget excellent, that I was just proficient in science and math was always taken as an anomaly by both my cultural peers and my non-cultural peers. So I think as a culture and as a community, we have to get past that stigma that African Americans can do more than run and, and jump. Hi, I'm Scott Kammer, president of Sodell Concepts, the best restaurant group in the state, and we're inviting you to come join our team. Sodell Concepts is a growing hospitality company with 16 restaurants and a variety of other hospitality businesses, all located in beautiful Southern Delaware. We have recently added many departments to our executive leadership team, including a training department, a property development department, and a construction department. We invite you to come live at the beach and work with a growing restaurant group with many opportunities to advance your career. Settle Concepts Restaurant Group, come check us out. Turner. I am a registered nurse here at Bay Health. I've been a nurse for 29 years, but I am a been here at Bay Health for 11 years, and I am currently a nurse navigator working in oncology department. The advice I would give to African Amer young African Americans that are trying to get into healthcare is that representation is very important, and um, if you love your community and you love what you do, it's very important for them to see you and see themselves in you. Um, that was. North Carolina Central right now ranked fourth in the MEAC. There's a shot for Savannah Brooks to start the second half for three, and it's off the rim. She didn't score in the first half. And now she'll take a charge. Will it be a charge against North Carolina Central? Now it's going to be Brooks called for the foul. She tried to set inside there. But it, it Taylor Morgan will go to the foul line, missing the shot. Brooks' second foul. Now she's over talking to the one of the officials. Kind of a, are you kidding me, look on her face as she talks, but a big smile, too. And there's a shot that goes up and drops in for Taylor Williams, up off the rim and dropping into the basket. She's trying to tie the game right here. And she did. We're up even at 24 here in the second half. Leading scorer in the game for Delaware State, a surprise, Jayla Johnson with eight in the first half. She averages four a game, so she was hot. Yeah. Morgan Callahan with 10 for 
North Carolina Central the leading scorer. Here's Martino from the left side of the foul circle, missing. Ty Tolly underneath, clears it around the defender on the left side, off the glass and good. And there they go, back into their 2-2-1, two, two, being aggressive, trying to trap Lauer, get the ball out of her hands, let someone else run the offense. And there they go, back into the lead. Now we've got a charge called as, uh, is that Kiaku? Yes, yes it, who, that's who it was. Journey Kiaku drives in the th two Delaware State defenders and gets called for the charge. That'll be the first foul in this quarter for North Carolina Central as the teams are even on that. And Delaware State will get the ball. Here's Moraney with her feet just on the line, a jumper. It goes off the back of the rim, off to the left side to North Carolina Central. Lowry will step back to the Hornets logo in the middle and then go to the right side to Taylor Williams. Williams tried to pass it inside to Anaya Finger, but way over her head and passed her out of bounds. Turnover to Delaware State. Kippy Robertson in now. Kiaku, who went out earlier limping with the ankle, goes to the bench and it looks like she's limping just a little bit as she walks over there. She took a hard, when that charge happened, she hit the ground pretty hard that time. And Coach doesn't want to lose her. Again, you're trying to keep healthy bodies going into this MEAC tournament within a few weeks. Hornets working the ball around. Martino drives in on the left side baseline. She gets fouled in the act of shooting. And this will be Anaya Finger getting her third personal foul of the game. Martino in the act of shooting, so she'll go to the line on the season. Yeah, she can pick up that average here, but right now she's at 46.9% from the line, 15 of 32. Missed the first shot off to the left. Again, she had a great first half, even though the stats might not show it. That one rolled off the rim, and it will be touched by Jayla Johnson before it goes out of bounds. Eagles ball. Again, now Dell State able to set up their press. Martino, known a little bit more for the defense. She's eighth in the conference in rebounding. So she contributes that way for Delaware State. Now the ball on the floor, and we'll have a jump ball. It'll go to the Eagles as the Hornets had it to start the second half. And again, that pressure, Dell State is starting to get more and more confidence in that. Once you start seeing a team have a little bit of doubt, you can intense, make it more intense. Left side now, it's Tippy Robertson with the ball, passes cross court, Tamira Brooks. They shoot well off the mark. Savannah Brooks gets the rebound, or the loose ball. Moraney back out to Brooks on the right side. Back to Moraney on the right. She'll go down, work in on the baseline. Go cross court to Johnson. Now Brooks alone in the corner. Good! Uh, now she starts getting hot here as she gets her first points of the game. Could be interesting. Coming down court, Tippy Robertson. Kind of just uh, slides to the side a little bit and makes contact with Jessica Martino. And Martino will be called for her third personal foul. She will now go out as Brianna Dodson will step onto the court. When these two teams met, met in uh, North Carolina back on the 21st of January, it was a 19-point win for the Eagles. Hornets making adjustments and a steal by Savannah Brooks. Well, she'll bring it down the court now. Stepped in front, batted away the pass and grabbed it herself. Johnson left side. Works inside toward the foul circle. Goes to Tolly in the paint. Back out to Johnson. Plenty of time here. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Brooks alone. She'll work inside now to Dodson. Dodson, spin move in the lane. And they tied her up just enough that she was not able to get a good shot off. Hornets high up North Carolina Central on the loose ball. Simultaneous possession. Hornets will get the possession, but just have three seconds left on the shot clock to do something. And for Savannah, for Savannah Brooks, that was steal number 24 on the season. 
she does play well on both ends, offensively and defensively. And for the third time this year, the MEAC Rookie of the Week. Inside to Tolly. Tolly's shot off the rim comes down to Finger for North Carolina Central. Again, we have a jump ball as Brooks gets in there and ties it up. It'll be Eagles ball, though, on the possession this time. But every time you do that and the Eagles get it, then the next time you do it, you get it. Kira Lowry going inside, trying to get a layup. She's fouled. Brianna Dodson, her second personal now, with 6.56 left in the third quarter. Again, some of the minor adjustments I can see already Central is making it. Coach has obviously told her guards to be a little bit more aggressive because, again, Dell State's bigs are not sliding their feet well enough down there in the paint once they get past their guards. And that's where they're picking up these little cheap fouls. Lowry at the line, missing that shot. She had four points against the Hornets back on January 21st. She has six here today so far. As her team trails now, just under seven minutes to play in the third quarter, she makes the second shot go. And so Delaware State with a four-point lead, 29 to 25. Pass inside underneath Dodson, couldn't control it. It'll roll out of bounds and off of Delaware State, a turnover. And that was another quick pass by Savannah Brooks that Dodson wasn't ready for. And again, it looks like now what they're saying is if they make the foul shot before they sit up their press, we're going to execute our transition break quicker and hopefully be able to beat them down the floor. And they did that time. Now it's Callahan passing it to the right side and a steal by Brooks. Brooks, left side of the lane, drives for the layup, off the glass and good. Contact was made, but she still got the basket. No call on it, except count the basket. 31-25, Delaware State now up by six. All alone on the left side, Naya Ford just dropped a three. Two field goals for her today, and both are three-pointers. Hornets lead cut the, they only gave her two on that. I thought she was well outside. So Ford, Five points on the game. There's a three-point shot by Moraney that missed. And put back underneath, Jella Johnson. Double figures for her today, 33-27. Mia Ford just went down and dropped a three for the Eagles. Makes it 33-30. Hornets remain in front by three. Both teams are trading baskets here now, warmed up in the third quarter. Three-point shot contest. Ah, we have a foul as Nia Ford reaches in on the pass to Savannah Brooks. Didn't get the ball, but got Brooks, and that's the foul. Jayla Johnson will get a chance to sit here. And Sydney Curtis, who got into action for the third time this season in the first half, comes in takes the inbound pass from Brooks. Is it back to Brooks on the right side? They'll take it toward the middle. Now inside to Dodson, right side of the lane. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Curtis, left side. Cross-court pass to Brooks. Five seconds on the shot clock. She puts it up for three, comes off the rim, and the Hornets unable to grab the loose ball. Robertson grabbed it for the Eagles. Piaku, right side. Go to the middle to Burks. Burks. Tied up there, gives it to Nia Ford as she crosses. Ford made a little bit of contact with Curtis as she came around, lost the ball. Curtis got the loose one, took it down for the layup, and was fouled. It will be Kamira Brooks on the foul. And that gets us to our media timeout. 4.53 left in the third period. Delaware State up by three, 33-30 over North Carolina Central. Putting the UNHBCU, we are HSRN.
Little Creek Fire Company wants some people who want to make a difference in their community. If that's you, call the Little Creek Fire Company, Scott Fundick, 302-362-5455 to find out how you can help. Sydney Curtis at the line for the Hornets right now. And making that first shot for Sydney Curtis. That's her first scoring of the season. Again. Oh, for one from the floor on, uh, and has not had a foul shot prior to today. Makes them both. Gets into the scorebook for the first time this season. If you're here for the first time, you would be asking yourself, how come this girl isn't on the floor? Well, she came onto the roster in January and just hasn't had a chance to get much playing time. Shot by Burks, missing, comes down to Brooks. Brooks on the outlet, brings it down court. Right side, Moraney wants three. Off the rim, won't go. Loose ball being tipped around. Central will get the rebound on the effort by Callahan. Callahan sends it down to Robertson. Robertson gives it off to Burks. Burks wants three. She'll bang it off the back of the rim. Comes down to Curtis. Couldn't control it. It tipped out of her hands to Call by Callahan and to a teammate. Burks now on to the left side to Tippy Robertson. Robertson looking, passing it around to the middle to Burks. Burks goes, gives it off to Kiaku. Kiaku sends it down on the right side to Burks out of the corner, and that will be a three for Burks. That's a big shot there for Central to knock that down with Colt. the shot clock going down. Hornets lead 35-33. Oh, what's going on, Charles? Some of the times I think we get threes. I look, and the scoreboard showing them as twos. Dodson tried to pass across court, off the mark, out of bounds to the Eagles, who are within two now, and looking to either tie it or go ahead. Dodson will step out, and Martino back on the court for Delaware State. With Kiaku, we'll check that on. Burks on the left side, shooting for three, and she nails it. And that's going to put North Carolina Central in the lead for just the second time today. 36-35. Just three minutes left to play here in this first half, third quarter. Savannah Brooks holding the ball. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Works down along the baseline, put it up. It deflected. No call, though. Could have been a, a foul call there. Now Burks works along the baseline, sends it over to the left side, shot for three, missing for Kiaku. Loose ball goes out of bounds off of the Eagles, Hornets ball. As the Eagles have taken a one point lead here in this third quarter, Jayla Johnson back in, Alexis Moraney to get a break. Anaya Finger comes back in now for the Eagles, and Tippy Robertson goes out. Finger with three fouls has to be careful out there. She seems to pick them up fairly quickly. Sydney Curtis gives to Johnson, top of the key, over to Brooks. Nobody in her face. She said, I'll shoot it, but it hit off the back of the rim and came out to Burks. Lead pass down court to Finger. Had to throw it back before she went out of bounds. Sends it back out to Taylor Williams. Her shot rolls around the rim and comes out to Martino. Pass by Curtis trying to get it to Brooks. Taken away. And Burks with the steal and takes it down for the layup. 38-35 now. Largest lead of the game for North Carolina Central at three. And the Hornets want a timeout here with 2.01 left in the third quarter. That was a good timeout by the coach. Alkaline water at its best, that's B2L29. Premium alkaline water, you can visit them on the web at B2L29PW.com. Don't forget, coming up after this game, we will have men's action here. Delaware State against North Carolina Central. The Hornets and, and the Eagles men also working for position. If the tournament began today, Delaware State in the sixth seed would play University of Maryland Eastern Shore, the third seed as of today. And that game would be on Thursday, March 9th at 8 p.m. North Carolina Central 
is number four coming into today's action. They would play at 6 o'clock on Thursday the night against Morgan State, who's the fifth seed. But that could be changing a little bit. Everybody's real tight within a game or two of each other in the standings right now. Yeah, and again, if you look at it, everything is mirroring itself. North Carolina Central women, fourth place. North Carolina Central men, fourth place. Delaware State men, sixth place. Delaware State women, sixth place. And if it's any contest, if our men play the way our women are playing with a full roster, it's going to be a real interesting game, Gary. Right now, we can tell you Norfolk State leading Morgan State. Listen to this one, 51 to 6 in uh, 51 to 16 in women's action. Coppin State leading uh, Howard 31-22. These are the latest scores we've been given. UMES 43-22 over South Carolina State right now. Delaware State will play South Carolina State on Monday here in Memorial Hall. Martino driving inside, shot wide, can't go. Inside underneath, Brooks got the rebound and worked around until she got a position to make a shot. Gets the Hornets back within one, 38-37. Shot for three, oh, she hit it. Kamira wow. Burks. And again, that means that first time, she, that shot she took in the first half was no fluke. She knows her range. And she has now opened up a four-point lead for North Carolina Central. Brooks gets the ball, gives it to Tolly, drives inside, now sends it back out. Jayla Johnson wants three, all alone on the left side in front of the bench. It hit off the rim and came out to the Eagles. Minute and five left in the third period. It's Lowry with the ball. She'll back out to the Hornets logo at center court and now drive to the right side. Working inside, goes for the layup, count the basket, and she'll go to the line. And again, that time, what Central did was they had a big down low and slid her up to the foul line. There was no backside help that time. Lowry just drove all the way to the basket. Savannah Brooks called for her third foul as Alexis Moraney comes back in. And Lowry goes to the line for the Eagles. Lowry hits that shot, makes it the three-point play, and now the Eagles leading Delaware State by 7, 44-37. Strong third quarter here for North Carolina Central. Hornets looking just a little bit sluggish, not hitting their shots now. Tried to pass it to Martino, Anaya Finger slapping that one out of bounds. They'll inbound it to Johnson, who gets it to Ty Tolly. Left side now to Curtis. Curtis goes across to Moraney. Moraney works up, baseline jumper off the rim, comes down to Martino, reset the shot clock. Tolly gets a pass, spin move underneath, won't go. Ball goes out of bounds. Who's it going to be? It will be North Carolina Central ball. As Moraney and Martino kind of clashed trying to get that loose ball. 23.8 seconds remaining in this third period. No shot clock now. North Carolina Central can bring it down slowly, use up some of this clock here. Yeah, Dale State's in a man-to-man. -man. Lowry standing at the logo, dribbles, looks up inside. Seven seconds on the clock. Shot by Burks for three, rolls around the rim, won't go in. Loose ball, comes on out to Callahan. She puts it up, won't go, and that's how the third quarter will end with North Carolina Central leading by seven. Not a good third quarter for the Hornets. 44-37 as we go to the break. Putting to you in HBCU, we're HSRN. Hello, I'm Kimberly Holmes, Stroke Clinical Nurse Specialist at Bay Health chair of the Delaware Stroke System of Care Committee and board president of the Delaware American Heart and Stroke Association. I am also a proud DSU alumna. Stroke disproportionately affects African Americans. I am driven to educate my community regarding the prevention and or control of risk factors such as high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and obesity. I'm Kimberly Holmes and I'm here for our Hornets.
We're in the fourth quarter now. Final 10 minutes of the game, Gary Lang, Charles Robertson at Delaware State. They get it to Savannah Brooks. She goes inside. Ball came out of her hands. Martino grabbed it, tried to go up for a shot. She got fouled. So Jessica Martino will have a chance to get some points on the board for Delaware State without the clock running. Morgan Callahan getting her second foul. It's important for Dell State to start to cut into this lead early. That one off the back of the rim and comes out, won't go. Martino played but didn't score when they played North Carolina Central down in North Carolina back on the 21st of January. She got that second shot to go in though, and so now it's a six point lead for the Eagles as Martino with five points on the day. Jumper, short range jumper. Looked like it was gonna fall in, came back out, had a lot of English on it, missed shot by Kiyaku for the Eagles. Kiyaku's been a little bit steady, but with that bad ankle, and looks like she's been having a lot of injuries here. Delaware State unable to control the loose ball after the shot. It went out of bounds. Norfolk State has it, and we have a foul called against the Hornets. Martino now with her fourth personal foul. I think she's gonna come out here. It looks like Dodson will come back in. And that gives them a little bit more size underneath here. They've been getting beat under the boards for a while. Yeah, but now Dotson's going to have to exert her offensive energy on the other side because, again, with the ball in her hand, Martino's able, Martino able to go left, right, and around some of the bigs for North Carolina Central. Anaya fingers at the line. She just hit her first shot, giving her her first point of the day and getting the Eagles back to a seven-point lead. My math tells me it's eight as she hits the second one. 46. 38. 38. And the Hornets trying to get this fourth quarter back the way the first half was for them. Working around the left side, Moraney looks for some help, sends it all the way across court now to Savannah Brooks. She'll go inside to Dodson underneath, steps into the paint, shot deflected, comes down to Anaya Finger for the Eagles. She goes up, gets the shot to go. Savannah Brooks is going to get called. Savannah Brooks picking up for her for fourth personal. A little bit more physical today than we've seen any other time. Uh, yeah. I don't can't think of many other two games when she's gotten into the four foul category. And again, they, they're keying on her on the offensive end is making it tough for her to get her shot off. Fingers shot missed, but she did hit the layup on the foul. So now it's a 10 point lead for North Carolina Central, 48-38. As Delaware State has only put up 14 points here in the second half, while the Eagles have put up 26. Martino now steps just inside the arc, puts it up high, it hits off the back of the rim, won't go. Tolly gets the loose ball rebound. They reset the shot clock. Now Moraney will set up this play. Working on the right, left side, inside to Tolly. The pass deflected, but still got to her. Got her feet moving too much, though, and the official there could call the traveling Shalisa Painter, the umpire, on the call. Eagles ball as they come down into the forecourt with it. It's Lowry, the point guard, working right side. Now she'll drive to the baseline. Tried to get a shot up, but uh, Brianna Dodson was standing there and deflected that one. It's looking like if they can't hang on with that 10-point lead, fatigue is really starting to set in for the Lady Hornets. Pass inbounds, missed the mark, the finger. And it will go out of bounds. Hornets get a break there. They get the ball. Those mental turnovers are helping Dell State right now. Hornets getting some help here from Sydney Curtis, getting more time in this game than she's had in any other this uh, the previous two this season in which she's played. They work it outside now. Right corner. Johnson for three, missing. Eagles get the loose ball rebound as it came strong off the rim. Kiaku goes right side to Ford. Ford puts it up and it gets stuck. 
between the rim and the basket. On a men's game, they just look at one of the 6'10 guys and say, go knock that out of place. <laughs> For the women's game, they don't have people that tall. They had to have the guy who keeps that, uh, that brush if they have to wipe up the floor. He had to go out there and use the stick. And again, I don't know. The, the way, as hard as these ladies are playing right now, they may not want to exert any energy going <laughs> up there anyway. No. Yaku gets the inbound pass as it reset the shot clock. Of course, we know it touched rim. It was stuck there. Now it's Burks wants three. Off the rim. It'll come down. Jayla Johnson steps up, grabs the loose ball. High bounce rebound. Curtis to the right side. Now works toward the middle. Cross court to Jayla Johnson. Johnson leading the Hornets with 10 points in the game. And as she comes in, she gets fouled on a reach in by Tippy Robertson. First for Tippy and the second in this final period of the game. And if you're noticing now, Gary, what they're doing as far as central, they're closing out short on Dell State, letting them shoot jumpers because they know the ladies' legs are a little fatigued. A lot of these Dell State jump shots are falling short, playing with a short bench. They're working around now. Johnson, top of the key, goes inside to Dodson. Dodson on a move to Tolly. Tolly in the paint. Now kicks it back out. Left corner. Moraney bounces it around the rim, and it won't go. Finger grabs the rebound for the Eagles. One on two, fast break, and we'll have a foul here as Kiaku forces her way inside. Let's see who gets called for this one. Sydney Curtis. Her first personal, and I think that might be her first foul of the season, too, as this is game three for her. Kiaku goes to the line, bounces that first shot off the back of the rim. Hornets happy about that. Kiaku, 64% from the charity stripe coming into today. And again, it's showing a one-man break that time by North Carolina Central. Got the second one to go, though, and now it is a an 11 point lead for yeah. Central, 49 38. 6.50 to go, and a timeout called by Delaware State as interim coach Jasmine Turner wants to get uh, maybe a breather for the team here. She sees that they're tired. Yeah. And getting that extra time out here and the opportunity to catch a break. Going to give you some scoring updates here. Norfolk State leading 61 31 over Morgan State. Coppin State up 43 30 over Howard. And 57 to 25, UMES leading South Carolina State as we're getting updates out of the studio here this afternoon. These are the women's games that are being played right now. We'll also pass along updates on the men's games later on this afternoon. We'll be back with you with the men's game about a half an hour after the end of this women's game. And then Monday, beginning at 5.30, women's and men's action here from Memorial Hall as South Carolina State will come in to play. Then next Saturday, we'll go to Baltimore um, for contests against Morgan State as we get closer and closer to the end of the season. On the 27th of February, the Hornets are going to close out the season with a couple of home games. Coppin, Coppin State will be coming in here on February 27th, and then on Thursday, March 2nd, it's UMES. Hornets inbound the ball here to Moraney. Moraney bouncing it around, working to the right side, and she gets fouled as she comes around. Morgan Callahan will be called for that one, her third. And that is the third team foul, Callahan's third. Jayla Johnson, bounce pass into Moraney. Moraney working to the right side, passes it to Tolly. Tolly sends it over to Curtis on the left side. Curtis will work in toward the middle, tried to just give it to Tolly, 
It got past her and to North Carolina Central. And a reaction by Delaware State committing a foul. Ty Tolly, just her second foul. She's usually one that at this point has three or four, and she's been pretty clean inside underneath today. Six and a half minutes to go. Eagles ball. Lowry crosses the logo. Right side to Robertson. Robertson takes it down in the corner to Lowry. She'll now pass it inside, trying to go baseline to finger. Tipped out of bounds by Tolly. Eagles keep it. Tolly out now. Rebecca Ford comes in. Tolly's had a lot of minutes here in this second half. Ford giving her a breather. Clean inbound to Callahan, who sends it back out to Lowry. She works back out to the logo. Now goes left side to Robertson. Robertson drives inside the foul circle. Callahan with a jumper. Misses. Dodson's there for the loose ball rebound. Gets it off to Curtis. Curtis tries to take it down the right side. She'll pass it off to Dodson. Dodson in the paint. Ball just came right out of her hands. Yeah, that was a good play all around until she lost it. Lee Lowry had the lead pass. She took it down, took a shot, missed. Follow up, missed. And Ford grabbed the ball for the Hornets. 5.35 to go. Johnson right side. Over to Moraney toward the middle, top of the key. She'll fade to the left side now and give it up. Oh, thought she was going to pass it off. She took it all the way down to the baseline, went for a jumper. Well off the mark, but, but got fouled. Yeah. Yeah. Lowry getting her first. That's the fourth team foul here. And plenty of time here that if the Eagles keep fouling, Hornets will end up in the bonus, and that could help here. But they're down by 11 and haven't scored for quite a while. But now it seems like Central has the six man out there on the floor, which is fatigue. And it looks like for the ladies, everybody's got hands on hips. Everybody's mouth is open trying to get oxygen. They just got to pull through with this last 524 and hopefully put a dent in that lead and let North Carolina Central use some of their timeouts to give them a breather. But Moraney just ended the lead by two because she hit both foul shots to make it 49 to 40. So Lowry will bring it down now across the center line for the Eagles. Gives it off to Nia Ford. They'll work it down in the foul circle to Callahan, who goes in the paint spin move, and a nice hook shot over the defender. Back to an 11-point lead, 51-40 for the Eagles. Curtis working to the left side to Ford, now Jayla Johnson. And with this short bench for Delaware State, you know at this point in a game like this, you wouldn't be seeing Sidney Curtis and Rebecca Ford in the game. Delaware State shot put up by Dodson, who's getting more time than usual today, too, because of the short bench, and it was off the mark. North Carolina Central grabbed that ball. Now Robertson has the Eagles with an 11-point lead and under four four, just about four and a half minutes to go, taking their time. Pass inside to Ford, batted away. Ford went and got it. They got traveling there as Taylor Williams tried to work around for a position around the defender, got the extra step. Now Ford and Curtis go off, Brooks and Martino back in for Delaware State. And they've had some rest now, Gary, so it's 422 left in your ball game here. You need to make sure you set a mark. Savannah Brooks sitting with seven points. If she can pick it up here in this final four minutes or so, <coughs> she can help the Hornets team. Jayla Johnson sends it over. Moraney on the left side. Hits off the rim. Just can't get. They're just off by an inch or two on their shots. So many of them hitting the rim that look like they're going to fall. Now Lowry takes it around. Bounce pass left side to Callahan. They go all the way to Burks on the right. Burke sends it inside underneath. Shot put up too light for Callahan, and the Hornets will get the ball. Now Jayla Johnson, lead pass off the glass. She hit it. Jayla Johnson having her maybe her best game of the season scoring-wise, making it 51-42. 3.33 left. They got time. There's a steal by Brooks. 
Brooks going to bring it down. She'll step up right, right side. Thought about going for two. She'll go inside to Martino. She'll kick it back out. Brooks wants three. Oh, and an air ball came up short and went out of bounds. She can't believe it. And nobody in the stands can either. As far as, as the line, looked like it was going to go in, but it just came up short. North Carolina Central asked for a timeout here with 3.14 left on the clock. And we'll take the break. 51-42 Central ahead of Delaware State. Putting the U in HBCU, we're HSRN. I'm Lytle Letsom. I'm a general surgeon. I am the director of wound care for Bay Health for both its Kent and Sussex campuses. I think that the thing to rising up above is one, changing the stigma of being scientifically and mathematically proficient as a person of color. That is both within our community and external to our community. I am currently 52 years old. I have faced that stigma every face, every step of my career, no matter where I went. The notion that me being an African American that I was proficient, forget excellent, that I was just proficient in science and math was always taken as an anomaly by both my cultural peers and my non-cultural peers. So I think as a culture and as a community, we have to get past that stigma that African Americans can do more than run and, and jump. Hi, I'm Scott. Jeez. There we go, Gary. Back to action, North Carolina Central with the ball and a jumper for Kamira Burks goes in to put the Eagles back in front by 11, 53-42. Every time the Hornets score two, North Carolina Central comes back and puts two in of their own to make it an 11-point lead. Jayla Johnson, great dribbling there as she fell down, never lost the dribble, got back <laughs> up and dribbled away from the defender. Now they send it out to Savannah Brooks. She'll try to dribble around defenders. That ball goes into the backcourt, and it was touched by Central. Brooks goes to the floor to save it, and then Anaya Finger comes in, puts hands on it. Simultaneous possession. Hornets with the ball, but they'll put it in from the backcourt with just three seconds left on the shot clock. Now they're going to bring the, I don't know, what do you call that, a, a dry squeegee out to uh, take care of the floor where players went down. For all of your automotive needs, trust the duck. That's Fred Drake Automotive. Call 302-378-4877. Jayla Johnson having a great game here this afternoon. Unofficially 12 points. Her season high was 11 against Astra back on December 18th. There's Martino picking up a ball off the floor. Loose ball, and she put it in for two. Jail State really has to make a defensive stop here. A turnover would be great here for the Hornets. Piaku, or, or uh, Lowry with the ball. Now to Burks. Burks has been killing him with threes. She tries to pass it over to Blessing Oka. Almost lost that one, but she saved it. Now they'll put up a wild shot off the glass. And if that's on Martino, that's it for her. Burks gets fouled. Brianna Dodson was gets the foul. Burks with two more points. Leads the scoring with 15 of the 40, uh, 54 points. And makes the three point play to give her 16 on the day and makes it 56 44. Hornets fall down 12 points behind here with a minute and 58 left. Led through most of the game. Had the lead at the end of the first quarter and at the end of the first half, but a great third quarter by North Carolina Central put them in front. Delaware State showing fatigue here and unable to pull the comeback in the fourth quarter. Savannah Brooks drives past defenders, missed the shot, went down to Martino on the other side. And Brooks fighting a finger for the ball, jump ball. Possession goes to the Eagles. A minute and 40 left. Well, it's getting down to the wire now, and they really have to just dig, dig. 
whatever they got left in them just to try to win this one ball game, Gary. And they have to get the ball back here as North Carolina Central is controlling it. Drive down inside underneath, shot deflected, grabbed by Tippy Robertson. And Robertson puts it in her first basket of the day to make it 58-44. Now a 14-point lead for North Carolina Central as Delaware State grabs a 30-second timeout. Cush College is a proud supporter of HBCU sports. You can find them on the web at cushcollege.com. America's mortgage coach is ready to find you a house. Give a call to John Millette at 866-409-9000. For Jayla Johnson, I uh, started to mention earlier, 12 points on the game unofficially. Her season high, 11 against Hofstra back on December 11th. Her career high is 13. She scored that while playing for the Spartans, North Carolina, Greensboro, back during the 2021 season. So this could be a season high game if she gets two more points in this game. And she is on the floor to finish it out with a minute and 16 to go. She will take the inbound pass. Sends it to Martino. She'll give it off to Brooks on the left side. Brooks looks inside. Now, Moraney. On the side in front of the bench, just dropped a three. That's a big shot. 58-47, back to an 11-point lead for the Eagles. Hornets trying to come up with a steal here or a tie-up. They can tie it up. They'll get the possession. Pass nice out, steal. and they forced a bad pass. Johnson on the layup. Lost the ball on the way up. Slapped out of her hands by Lowry. Hornets ball with 41.8 seconds to go and down by 11. They'll get it into Brooks, Brooks left side. You don't have a lot of time here, Gary. Yeah, Marina Marini now goes right side of the lane. The ball slapped away from her, but contact made as well. Burks called for number three. That's the team's fifth. Hornets wishing it was one or two more that they'd be in the bonus and well, get a I chance to shoot the, some. What Coach can do right here now is sub uh, Martino out because she's the only one really with four fouls. Take her out, take Ford in, and maybe just make this a foul shooting contest and see what might happen. Rainey will be at the line here to try to pick up a couple of points and gets that one. She's in double figures on the day and cuts the lead to 10. Could make it single figures here with 34.4 showing on the clock in this contest. Second shot won't go. Brooks underneath on the rebound, and she made it the three-point play as she got two on that. North Carolina Central calling the again. timeout with an eight-point lead and 32 seconds to go. And again, they're not in the one-and-one one yet, so I would get in there and foul them. Hornets with five fouls here in this fourth quarter. North Carolina Central with the same. Reminder, a half an hour after the end of this one, more or less 30 minutes after, we'll have men's action for you here. North Carolina Central ranked fourth right now in the MEAC, coming up against Delaware State, sitting in the number six spot in the conference in the men's standings. As it gets down now, every game really, really counts as... It's so tight in that middle of the pack for the MEAC yeah, standing. It really is. There's no clear-cut favorite. Not. So as we come back here, it's going to be North Carolina Central ball. And I think what uh, we had there with that timeout, interim coach Jasmine Turner setting up the defense here, what they want to do. And they've got to get in there, and, and they're going to foul. Moraney who has had five to give, so she went over and committed the foul. Going to send Kyra Lowry to the foul line, though, and she's been having a good time there this afternoon. Lowry on the season, averaging seven points per game, and with that shot, puts her up to 11 as she made the first foul shot. Both 
60 to 50. Not much time left here for Delaware State. Whistles and uh, Jasmine Turner being admonished by an yes. official for where she was standing. She was right in the area where a coach is allowed to be. And she well, let him she know it. What she was trying to do was get the time out right. in order to advance the ball, but now they're telling her the ball had already come in bounds. And she was telling the official, I was yelling at you, time out, time out. But now he's claiming he didn't hear. And in Memorial Hall, it's possible. <laughs> because, it, you know, good crowd here for the women's game, but it is filling up now here as we are getting ready for the men's action in about 30 minutes. There are 28 seconds left here. The chances of picking up 11 points and winning this they are down by 10. Um, it was just that third quarter that really did the Hornets in here. Yeah, it was. But at the same time, I mean, if you hit a three and get fouled, that's 54 to 60. If you send them to the line and they miss both and there's 25 seconds left and you hit a three, now it's a three-point game. And it's always, like I said, until that clock shows zeros, the Lady Hornets are going to fight. In that third period, North Carolina Central outscored Delaware State 23 to 13. Yeah. And then uh, pulled away here in the fourth quarter as well, putting up 16 points while the Hornets put up 13. And that's why they have a 10-point lead right now. Savannah Brooks will send it into Alexis Moraney. And Hornets will take it down court quickly. They know they can't take a whole lot of time. They've got to get a shot. Moraney sends it down to Johnson on the left side. She'll work up to the foul lane. Jumper missed. Central with the rebound. Kamara Brooks, uh, Burks, comes down with the ball. And as she comes by, Savannah Brooks will get her first, her fifth foul. And she will lead the game with 11.1 seconds left. And I think that's her first foul out in her collegiate career. The freshman has been everything that the Hornets would have hoped for from her on the season. Mira Brooks back at the foul line. She's leading all scorers with 17 right now. And it's back to an 11-point lead for the Eagles. She makes it a 12-point lead. 62-50, Brooks... 18 points unofficially and a steal by the Eagles they defeated Delaware State by 19 back on January 21st they're going to come away with a 12 point win here against the Hornets this afternoon 62 to 50 over Delaware State so Hornets with a short bench seven or eight players available at times I saw only seven but then I saw when they were on the court one time with five, there were three that were dressed over there. Interim coach for the game was Jasmine Turner. So the Hornets uh, playing from a deficit position. Not many substitutions that they could make, and it showed it, the fatigue. And again, going in this situation, you're not, you're not sure how long Coach Hill has been gone, whether it was for practices or just for the game. But the staff had did an excellent job of filling in as, you know, putting in a group effort to coach these young ladies and then having a short bench. You know, they persevered as best they could against a real good North Carolina Central team. After, like you said, Gary, beating them by 13 and then playing such a really, really good first half, losing that third quarter, being down. I mean, they got outscored scored by like 10 points in that third quarter. And they put them in a deficit early. And they had to go back uphill having such a short bench and the fatigue just set in. As the Hornets went toward their locker room, the players, each one was greeted by University President Dr. Tony Allen as he shook everybody's hand on their way to the locker room. So that's it from uh, Memorial Hall right now as we're getting ready for men's action. Stay with us here on HSR and we're gonna send it back to the studio uh, for about 28 minutes or so and then we will pick it back up here with the Hornets men against North Carolina Central as well. Delaware State losing to North Carolina Central 62 to 50 in the opener. Putting the U in HBCU, we are HSRN.